Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Core Keeper video. We're wrapping up our boss guides here with Malagaz the Corrupted. Now, he is the uh, the boss that is down in the Forgotten Ruins area, and he's a little tough. He's different from all the other bosses in that he doesn't really have a uh, a traditional pattern of fighting like Gorm. He does the figure eight. The Hive Mother is pretty uh, uh, settled. Uh, both of the slime bosses, you know, when they get enraged, they jump around a lot faster, so we can dodge those attacks. This guy he does a lot of different attacks, and uh, the majority of his attacks are catered around fire, so he's going to get that burn effect on you. So we're going to jump into our gear here and just kind of show you guys what we have going uh, to go take him on. We're going to be taking hits in this one. Now, you can do melee, you can do range, you can do a combination of both. You can try to use bombs. Um, when I fought him the first time, I did melee and just kind of tank, face tanked him, uh, took a lot of damage, but show you what we have here so again the scarlet uh armor you know the three set killing enemy increases critical hit chance by three percent stacks up to five times we definitely want that we do have two sky rings that we have from uh, azios so that's going to add our plus 14 critical hit chance and plus 13.5 percent melee damage you can see over here um our damage is pretty high three six seven four four seven 23 percent critical hit chance and 65 percent critical hit damage now that's going to be stacked on uh we do have the grub egg necklace for the 18.1 percent melee damage as well and that's going to be stacked on with our foods here. Um, go over the weapons real quick. Again, we're going to use the rune song. We ha we do have the poisonous sickle, but we're going to use this just for the uh, the life leech, the max health, and then the, uh, the increased damage. Um, let's see, now we can go over our foods. We do have our hearty pepper out for the movement speed and 25 max health. Uh, we have our crunchy mold cheese, again, from the Pafingi and the Karox for the 8% reduced damage taken from bosses. And plus this one for the plus 23 armor as well for 5 minutes. And we're going to stack that with the gooey stone dip snack, which is also going to be the Karok and the larva meat. So 23 armor on that one as well, plus 6% critical hit chance. So when we eat that, it's going to increase our crit, uh, crit hit chance as well. So we're going to be doing about a third, uh, one out of every hit should crit. Then we have our greater healing potions, obviously pl plus 40% health uh, regen. And then our guardian potions here that we are uh, probably going to use a few of just to reduce that damage that we're taking from uh, Malagaz. Skills, we don't need. Um, we do have this. So this is obviously going down the guardian path to the left here. We're increasing our critical hit damage. So I would like to get that a little higher, but um, not a big deal. We are rocking Soul of Azios' uh, Thunder Beam as well. So we have a plus 10% chance to spawn a Thunder Beam on melee critical hits. So that's why we're trying to get our crit chance up a little bit and then uh, increase our critical hit chance as well with the... Um, the foods that we have here and hopefully uh or that's why i want to go with melee damage as well we're basically going to try to melee this fight instead of using range to the second part of the second phase of the fight he kind of runs around a little bit more so it's uh you can dodge and use a ranged but we want to try to get that thunder beam attack off as much as we can so we are going to be uh trying to melee him so to get him we need uh, two things we need 10 of the crystal skull shards that we have to turn into a full skull and then we have to find his throne room. Now, his throne room is going to be in the Forgotten Ruins area. You can see we're in the uh, the middle here, right by the core. So for us right here on the map, it is outside of Gorm's uh, circle here, but it is in the Forgotten Ruins. You can see it right here. It literally looks like a battle arena. Now, I'll tell you one thing when we get down there. There's a bunch of crap in here, like um, the pillars, the stone pillars and stuff like that. So I recommend clearing that whole area out before the fight. But once we get down there, we'll, so we'll need the 10 skull shards. We get the skull. We'll go ahead and do that before we head down there. Place it on the summoning uh, summoning area. We'll summon him, and then the battle will start. So we'll go ahead and do this. We're going to take our 10 crystal skull shards. Now, these can be found in the Forgotten Ruins um, from the enemies. So the, the shamans, the cavelings, the brutes, they're all going to have a chance to drop these. So if you're looking for a bunch of them, just go around there and hunt those cavelings down there, and you should be able to get uh, 10 in no time. They are a little bit of a rare drop, so it might take you some time to get some. I've actually had uh, pretty good luck with getting them, so it, I, again, it's just going to depend on your luck, or the RNG of the game. So we're going to go ahead and put these on our hotbar here, and you see again, we have the icon down here, just like with the rune song. We're going to right-click, do some magic here, and then we're going to get our uh, crystal skull. Bazinga, there we go. Skull of the Corrupted Shaman. So now that is our item that we're going to use to summon uh, Molgaz, the Corrupted. A reforged crystal skull that whispers ancient chants. It urges you to place it on the throne room sigil. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, jump down there to the throne room. So we'll see you guys in a second. All right, so we're down here at the throne room, like I said. So you see his uh, summoning area right here, the sigil. We do have our skull. I want to point out real quick, this is what I got from him the first time. So it's a set of three, this blue leather tome. 
And this is going to increase your range damage by 21.6%. So there's a lot of items that you can use to increase your range damage. So that's something that we're probably going to mess with a little bit later. But you can see when you get the three set, all nearby enemies burn for plus 17 damage every third second. So we're still looking for the skull necklace and the skull ring. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the fight here. And uh, we're going to make sure we eat our foods first, actually. And then probably go ahead and drop a potion. And then drop this down and uh, get to it. So similar, he's going to drop these right here. We did get off the thunder beam, so super useful. And we just wreck him. Really didn't even, so now we get to uh, phase two, and this is where he's gonna start running around. So you can see that fire damage. So try to avoid the damage as much as you can. If you need to, jump out real quick and heal up. And just try to stay on top of him. There you go. Pretty simple fight. Uh, he does pack a punch if you don't have the guardian potions and stuff on. So definitely recommend having those. And then the uh, the plus armor as well. And the 8% reduced damage taken from the crunchy mold cheese. Definitely uh, recommend start gardening Pafingis if you don't have them. So unfortunately, we don't have a scanner for this guy yet. So the only way you can really uh, look around to find him is just to search. He is going to be outside of Gorm's um, path here though. So you'll just have to search for him. There is no scanner. Uh, the Crystal Skull Shards will summon him, and then once you know that location, you can come back here anytime you get 10 Crystal Skulls, and then uh, craft the uh, Corrupted Skull. Um, there's also no boss chest for him yet, so that's unfortunate, but let's see if we uh, get anything good here. So we got the Skull Ring this time, so that's pretty nice. We actually got quite a bit here. We did get a Blood Skull, we got two Battle Axes, and a Hand Mortar. Four uh, Gold Bars, and then another Blue Leather Tome, so... Not a bad haul, so now next time we're going to do this again, we're just looking for that skull necklace to complete the set. You can see right here, you do take uh, minus 29 max health, but plus melee, plus 8% melee attack speed, so super cool. Plus that with their, the uh, blue leather tome, and this doesn't take up an accessory slot. This goes in your off hand, just like the swift feather that we used against Ivy. So pretty cool. Overall, uh, really good loot here. We'll be happy with that. And then now we'll uh, be on our journey to go get... 10 more crystal skull shards to make another skull and come down and get them again. So that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, not a terrible fight. I think it's easier just to get up in there and in his face and melee as much as you can. If you have the plus armor and uh, enough defense and everything, the fire damage isn't going to really hurt you too much. And if you start seeing your health dip down a little bit too much, then just jump out of the fight, go up, heal up, drop another potion, eat some more food, and then just jump back in there. Obviously, the rune song is a huge help, but again, if you don't have it yet, Use the Poisonous Sickle or uh, use the Scarlet Sword. It's definitely going to help. So uh, enough melee damage will just take him out. Um, again, just a lot of defense and a lot of offense from your end. So that's all we got for this video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to uh, have you join the community. Link in the description to join the Discord. You hop in and we'll talk all things Core Keeper. So uh, that's all we got for this one again. So take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And as always, stay original, my friends. We'll catch you in the next video. Later.